This is the notes for section 10.4, unit circle definitions of cosine and sine. If you haven't done so already, make sure you pause the video at this time and read the section first before continuing on. Um, so up till now when we've looked at the definition of cosine and sine, we looked at our right triangle definition of that and we said by, by looking at it as a right triangle, we always had to limit our domain and range of the sine and cosine functions, or excuse me, our domain of the sine and cosine functions to values between 0 and 90 degrees because those would be the only angles that we could have in a right triangle. Today what we want to do is we want to use the unit circle to extend our, def or our, our domain of these two functions beyond just that, that range from 0 to 90 degrees to, and in fact to look at the, their values anywhere uh, for any real values. Okay, And here's how it works. The unit circle is a circle with a center at the origin and a radius of one unit. So when I look at my, my circle, the center is here, right here at 0, 0. You'll notice that the radius of my circle is 1. Okay. Now, we're going to always start with the point 1, 0. Okay. And if the, if the point 1, 0 is rotated around the origin with a magnitude of theta, here's that magnitude of the rotation, then the image point, the point that we end up at, x, y is also on the circle. Okay, so if this point 1, 0 is on the circle and we rotate theta degrees, it will remain on the circle and we're going to call that point x, y. The coordinates of the image point can be found by using sine and cosine. Okay, and here's how that works. If we look at dropping a perpendicular to the x-axis, we form a right triangle. And this distance right here would represent the x distance, or our x value. And this distance right here would represent our y value. Okay, So if you think about uh, how we've defined sine and cosine and, and looking at that right triangle, we know that the hypotenuse of that right triangle is 1 because we said the radius of the circle was 1. Therefore, if I look at um, if I look at the sine of theta, I can say the sine of theta is equal to my opposite, which is y, over my hypotenuse, which is 1. Therefore, y is equal to the sine of theta. And we can do the same thing if we look at the cosine of theta. We can say that the cosine of theta is equal to, remember the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be x over 1. Therefore, the cosine of theta is equal to x. So any point after a rotation of theta degrees, the x value and the y value are, the x value will be the cosine of theta and the y value will be the sine of theta. So before I go over number one, you might want to just take a quick look at um, and read example one again on page 683. If you want, you could pause the video and then start it up again. I'm going to go through this example. <laughs> All right, now example number one says, what are the coordinates of the image of 0, 1 under a rotation of 50 degrees? So if I'm going to rotate something 50 degrees, well, I know that the x coordinate will always be equal to the sine, or excuse me, the cosine of theta. Well, in this case, theta is that rotation value, so the cosine of 50 degrees. Okay? So to find my x value, all I have to do is find the cosine of 50 degrees. And to find my y value, all I need to do is find the sine of 50 degrees. Okay? Remember, the x value is adjacent over hypotenuse, so x over 1. So it's going to be the, exactly the same as x. So the cosine of 50 will be x, and the sine of 50 will be y. So if I enter those values in my calculator, we have the cosine of 50, which is, now remember we want to round to the nearest thousands generally when we're dealing with just the trigonometric function, so that would be 
0.43 and the sine of 50 would be 0.766. Therefore the ordered pair after a rotation of 50 degrees would be approximately 0.643 comma 0.766. So that's where that ordered pair would end up. So the unit circle definition, and that's what we're working with here, is the unit circle definition of sine and cosine. That agrees with our right triangle definition for all values of theta between 0 and 90 degrees. So there's no difference. We basically used uh, what we knew about right triangles to to come up with that. So the unit circle definition and the right triangle definition are the same for values in that first quadrant. Okay, So I have the, the unit circle definition listed here. So if there, we have a rotation of theta, um, at the center is 0, 0, magnitude of theta, then for any theta, the for and that's key, for any theta, the point cosine of theta, sine of theta, is the image of 1, 0 under a rotation of theta degrees. And remember, theta is just, is just a measure of an angle. All right, so now that we know that it works for any theta, let's look at cosine and sine for multiples of 90 degrees, OK? Because prior to that, we, we knew that it couldn't be 90 degrees. So let's just look at some multiples of 90 degrees before we go any further um, with this idea. You might want to just take a, a minute, look back, and read example two again in your textbook from page 684. Just kind of refresh yourself with that. And then we'll go on and do number two here. So let's take a look at example two here. It says, how can you use the unit circle to find the following values? Um, so I have my unit circle um, listed right over here. And what I want to do is I want to find the sine of 270 degrees. Okay. To do that, I'm just going to move. I'm going to rotate the point one zero around the unit circle, keeping in mind that the cosine sine the cosine of theta sine of theta represents the x and y values of that point. So if I rotate, and, and remember 270 degrees means I'm going counterclockwise, if I rotate 270 degrees counterclockwise around my circle, I end up at this point, and that's the point 0, negative 1. Therefore, the sine of theta, or the sine of 270 degrees, since that's my y value, the y value at that point is negative 1. Therefore, the sine of 270 degrees is negative 1. Okay? The second question asks us to find the cosine of negative 90 degrees. So I'm going, to, I'm going to follow the same process here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start at that point 1, 0. And I'm always starting at 1, 0. Anytime I'm doing these rotations, I'm starting at 1, 0. And I'm going to rotate negative 90 degrees. So negative means clockwise. So starting here, I'm going to rotate 90 degrees this way. And you'll notice that I end up at the exact same spot. Okay? We'll talk a little bit more about that when we start looking at the graph of this, why that might be. But I end up at the exact same spot, and that is 0, negative 1. If I'm looking at the cosine, well, cosine is the x value. Therefore, the x value at that rotation would be 0. OK, finally, let's take a look at example 3. Same idea as what we did in example 2, but now the values that I have for uh, my theta, my rotations are more than 360 degrees, and that, all that means is that I'm going to, going to go around my circle more than one time. So if I have negative 1,170 degrees, well, that I, every 360 degrees I go around, I'm just right back to where I started. So I go around once, it's 360. I go around a second time, that's 720. I go around a third time, and I'm at 1080. OK, well, now I, I'm not going to be able to get a fourth time around. So if I take the difference between that, I get 90 degrees. So really, this has exactly the same value as the sine of negative 90 degrees. So really, I'm going to turn negative 90 degrees, which ends up right back at that original point that, that we had actually up here. And the sine of negative 90 degrees, sine remembers the y value, therefore it would be negative 1. 
Part B is the cosine of 810 degrees. So now, if I'm going to go 810, I'm going to go around in a um, counterclockwise way. So starting once again at my 0 0.10, I go around one time. That's, that's going to be 360. A second time would be 720. And then if I go another 90 degrees, I'm at 810. So that's going to put me at that point 0 0.01. That would be 810 degrees. Therefore, the cosine of 810 is the same as the cosine of 90 degrees, which puts me right here. The cosine of 90 degrees is 0, because it's remember, it's the x value. So this would be 0.